What is up guys and welcome back to a brand new video. Today we are back once again with AOR. Apologies about the break between episodes. I was actually almost going to combine this with Singapore but I did that race last night and there was a lot of action. Uh, too much action to combine two races in one. It would have been like a 30 minute video and I don't think any of us have the attention span to watch all of that. So you're getting uh, Italy on its own. And uh, yeah, heading into this one, it's a pretty interesting prospect we have because we have heavy rain for the race. And uh, yeah, you guys know I don't do too well in the rain, but I'm slowly getting better and better each time we um, go out there. But having to make a little compromise on the setup, um, I had to increase the rear downforce just to make it a little bit more uh, stable for, for the race. Um, so that means probably qualifying times will be knocked around a little bit, but um, given the title of this video, I think you guys know how this is going to go. For, for once, I, I was really in the groove of the circuit. I knew exactly what the car could do, um, and, and I made a change to the way that I prepare for races. I used time trial this time. Now, I wouldn't normally recommend using time trial to get ready for a league race, because the, the handling model, well, not the handling model, the grip is just so different to what it is in online. But I was able to find that limit and kind of rein it in for this qualifying session. So here we go for our second qualifying lap of this first run. Uh, me and Ryan took a little while to get out of the pit lane to set our setup for the race because of Park Ferme and all that. He comes comes across the line set to 20.4. I go across the line and set a 20.1. Now at this point of the qualifying session, that is a mega, mega time. Uh, even if we don't improve from here, I think we're pretty much going to be on the front two rows of the grid. And so, heading into this final run, that gives us a huge amount of confidence to just go all guns blazing. Go 100% uh, full commitment, and if the lap doesn't come off, then that's completely fine. So here we go. Five seconds left to go in the session. We cross the line, open the DRS. Um, two laps worth of fuel, or one flying lap worth of fuel on board. Max fuel mixture. Oh, oh, a DRS is open, and braking really late into turn one, just before the 100 meter board. Um, second gear, short shift up to third. You're going to see the whole lap in all of its entirety so just watch the wheel work and, and the way that I drive over the course of this lap there's absolutely zero corrections of the steering wheel which on most of my hot laps you do see me do a lot of corrections through the second chicane here absolutely smooth and perfect like pinpoint accurate like we absolutely nailed that um, there's just couldn't cut it anymore couldn't uh, carry any more speed we just got a beautiful exit and uh, just a perfect middle sector, it must be said. So coming up to the middle sector split now, uh, we'll see how much we are purple by as we head into that second sector split, three tenths up. So we're on target to do a 19.8, nice and smooth through Ascari, short shifting up to, I think six gear it was, just to minimize that wheel spin. And now we just have the final corner, Parabolica, to negotiate. I think we break just before the 50 meter board, down to fifth gear, try and tuck it in nicely, don't run out too, wi too wide, Otherwise, you will lose a lot of momentum. And across the line, it will be pole position for the Italian Grand Prix in 19856. Uh, Ryan improved his time, I think, by two tenths um, to lock out the front row for Mercedes. Um, but he was still some four tenths away. He uh, probably could have improved a little bit more there. I think he was on, a, on to improve and be in the 19s with me as well. So that would have been a really tight battle for the two of us. Greek Master P3, um, really good job from him there. Almost got on the front row of the grid. HOP4, um, Jarrah P5, Warden down in P6, nearly eight tenths back. Um, he is not going to be happy with that qualifying effort, and it puts him at risk of uh, getting some damage on this first lap, especially given the rain. Uh, anything could happen at turn one. Um, no one knows the braking marker. Uh, it's the first time for all of us in wet conditions, so this is going to be quite tricky on this first lap. Away we go for the Italian Grand Prix. Lots of wheel spin for everyone off the line there. Just uh, doing our best job to manage that as uh, we get through the second phase of the start and head into turn one. It's side by side for the two protagonists here and we just managed to cut in front of Ryan and take the lead uh, once again. So Ryan was quite generous to us there. Probably could have lunged a bit more, but uh, knowing him in his championship position, he probably didn't want to risk a turn one incident, which is uh, you know what you want to see. You don't want to see your teammates coming together in the, the opening corner of the Grand Prix, that's for sure. And now Ryan can settle into the race quite well now and uh, apply the pressure onto me. And, uh, you know, that's certainly what I was feeling right there as I make a mistake on lap two, heading into the middle sector chicane. Um, yeah, just 
feeling it out, trying to see what the limits of adhesion is for the brakes uh, and what the tyres can do. Uh, I was struggling initially with, uh, actually, not the traction this time. It was just confidence under brakes. I was locking up quite a lot, and I was like, oh, no, I can't push. And so I had to rein it in a little bit, and it made me quite slow for these opening couple of laps. And with Ryan and Warden right up my ass, it made for some interesting driving in the opening few laps. So have a moment at the exit of Ascari. Ryan has got a really nice runner now. He's possibly going to take the lead here of the Italian Grand Prix. It's side by side for the two Mercedes boys. Warden is right there in third place behind us as well. So we can't afford to squabble too much as we run side by side through Parabolica. I still think I can retake the lead here. We've got a nice run through the final corner despite being pinched on the inside. And it's still side by side for the two of us. So a drag race now on the back straight, on start finish straight, sorry. And it's going to be whoever breaks the latest will take the lead of this race. I didn't want to go in too deep because I didn't want to lock up the brakes and smash into Ryan. So he takes a lead and he'll have the inside for the next left-hander. And uh, that is job done, I would say. But we got a nice exit out of the first chicane. And now we might possibly put Ryan back under pressure again. So... We're squabbling, and we're not really losing each other too much time, so I guess that, that's a good thing. But Ryan's going to have the inside for the next left-hander. I have to concede the corner there. It's his corner. And uh, there we go. I think that's the battle for the lead sorted now. We can settle into a rhythm, and now Warden is going to try and make the most of that as well in P3. So, yeah, for me at the moment, I, I think I've got my brakes kind of sorted. I know where to brake now, but... I'm really starting to burn off those rear tires now. That's that's now my issue, unfortunately. But trying to trying to do my best to hold on to Ryan. I'm still in his slipstream, so that's kind of helping me um, stay in front of Warden at the moment. He's looking possibly up the inside, heading into turn one. He has more confidence under brakes, and now I have to leave him space on the inside. So now we might lose P2 here if we're not careful. Leave Warden a bit of space on the outside. Still side by side, and I think we got the better exit there, and we maintain P2 for now. He carries on to the end of the sixth lap, uh, the same lap, and we have another little moment through Ascari. Not really nailing this section of the track, it must be said, and then Warden loses the back end and makes a mistake there. But at least what I thought, uh, looking back at it, that's what I thought, because there was no contact on my screen, but Warden told me after the race he actually ran into the back of me and uh, chipped off a small part of his front wing, which I was really surprised about so a bit of uh, desynchronization between the two of us there and now Warden is back on uh, my gearbox once again thanks to another mistake at Ascari I'm not too sure what it is it could be down to 11 ballast and uh, a lowish rear wing um, but it, it really I, just the way that I'm handling that corner really seems to be costing me uh, Warden does the under and over through the final corner and then he actually pits which I found to be really surprising because that would have been him getting into P2. But he's completely just giving up the position straight away. So, uh, wow, essentially a get out of jail free card because I'm not going to stop in this race. I am not going to stop in this race. We're going to the end on these wet tires. It's going to be wet the entire race. Um, at the halfway point of the race, the tires are on 45%. Well, just over halfway, so if we do the math, we get to the end, the tyres will be somewhere near 90%. It's a huge risk, kind of, but we are, uh, you know, I think we're still, we're still going to finish on the podium regardless. I think it's just a case of whether we finish second or third. So, I, and given that the fact that Warden has already pitted, if we pit now, we're giving up second anyway, so let's stretch it to the end of the race and see how we go. Lap 23, four laps to go. Tires are now at 75%, or the left rear is. Um, and to be honest, I haven't... Yeah, I'm not short shifting enough. I'm just generating too much wheel spin. Could be to do with my setup, uh, because if I've done the Singapore race, the next race in the calendar, and I was actually looking after the rear tires really well there, so it, it could partially be a setup thing, but also a driving style thing. Um, and the two of those were probably not coinciding well today because my tire wear was much worse than Ryan's and I just felt like if I was going to get to the end of the race I really had to back off for the final eight laps or something like that so the gap to water now is like five sec five six seconds um, and at this point I am absolutely cruising to the end of the race 
Um, not a great run through the chicane there. Mounted the mounted over the top of the curb, which uh, kind of pushed me wide a little bit, but we should be fine. We've got one three-second penalty. I believe Warden has at least a three-second penalty himself. So we just got to manage the gap to the end of the race. Um, he's catching me quite considerably now on his fresh wet tyres, but I don't think he's going to get me unless I get a puncture, which could well and truly happen. We're on 85% on the tyres, on the rear tyre, so yeah, just got to absolutely nurse at home. I was making sure I didn't burst in a wheel spin or I didn't get into a slide at high speed, like at Ascari, for example. And that's why my pace in the final 10 laps was a lot slower than what it should have been. I was just making sure that I got to the end. I didn't care how far behind Ryan I finished. I just wanted P2 and uh, secure another Mercedes 1-2 uh, in the championship. So here we go through the final corner. Ryan wins the race. We come across the line on absolutely dead tires. Look at that. 85% and that is P2 18 points for the championship so you know not the race that I would have wanted I would was really hoping it was going to be dry for the race um, considering how good our pace was on the dry and in over one lap it would have been a real showdown between myself and Ryan uh, for the entirety of that one but that wasn't the case but uh, full congrats to Ryan he won very dominantly uh, we got home in P2 with a really good strategy there over Warden I'm not too sure uh, what he was thinking there. Maybe he was trying to bait me into pitting as well and then getting the uh, the undercut. But, um, yeah, we realized we could take the, the tires to the end there. So that was pretty much it. So that's been this video for today, guys. Hopefully you did enjoy. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to see plenty more F1 2017 content. Um, like I said, I did the Singapore race, which is the race after this one. Uh, and you'll be seeing that over the next uh, couple of days. So unfortunately because of that I can't show you the standings without spoiling Singapore So just know that I've now moved into P2 in the standings I'm like one or two points in front of Warden and then the constructors Mercedes lead by like 70 points or something ridiculous like that So I've got a pretty good margin at the moment, but I am going away for a few weeks going to Silverstone going to Austria and, uh, yeah, I'm going to be missing a couple of races. So hopefully that is enough to cover us off in the Constructors. I'm not too sure about getting P2 in the standings. That is going to be a task and a half for the remainder of the season for me once I get back. But that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, I'll see you next time.